This morning in New Delhi, activists hold their breath. Given the history, genuinely didn't know what way the Supreme Court decision would go. It went this way. The court unanimously overruled a judgment from five years ago that upheld a colonial era law under which gay sex was defined as, quote, an unnatural offence. Today's ruling amounted to the decriminalisation of gay sex in India. I'm feeling amazing. We're going to party. I don't know. Is this so difficult to express? It's amazing. It's just amazing. It's, it's a very small move, but yet very, very fundamental. The, finally, the judgment came for our favour. And that's all we need as the youth of tomorrow. We need to be who we are. The journey to today has been a torturous one for activists. In recent years, the powerful religious lobby in India, for example, had managed to get previous decriminalization law overturned and had plenty of political support at the time. But the history of this goes back much farther than that. The law criminalising gay sex in India goes back to empire. Section 377 in India was the first so-called colonial sodomy law, but its influence spanned the globe, as British anti-gay laws were either imposed on or influenced countries all over the world. Among these, many have decriminalised, but it's still illegal in over 30 Commonwealth countries. Today's ruling in India comes off the back of a case last year upholding the constitutional right to privacy and today they were understandably dancing in the streets. Decriminalising what happens in private is one thing. The cultural shift required for equal civil rights across Indian society is another matter entirely. Parag Brown reporting earlier, I spoke to the Indian LGBTQ activist Vikram Doctor. I began by asking him about the history of the law. It dates from, from, unfortunately, from you guys, from the British, because it was the British who imposed this law on us uh, back in 1950s, uh, 1856. So, and unfortunately, we never got rid of it when we got rid of you. So we've just got stuck with the law ever since then. And yet, when one came to Delhi, and I've been quite a good few times, uh, you would often see cross-dressers, you would see, and very much accepted by the community, uh, and, and evidently gay people too. Um, so how I impressed mean, were you? Well, yeah, you know, places like Delhi and Mumbai are a bit of a bubble. Uh, that's why a lot of, like, gay people come to them, just like, you know, a lot of gay people used to come to cities like London in the past, just to escape from, you know, problems in provincial areas. So, yes, I mean, the problems were there. And even in cities like, like you know, Delhi and Mumbai, there were problems. There were many problems of blackmail, of harassment, of people being beaten up, of police refusing to take, like, these sort of problems seriously. So, yes, I mean, people have been able to lead gay lives in India, but always with a sort of sword dangling over their head. Homosexual law reform came in this country through the politicians, through, through the parliament. But in yeah. your case, it's come through... The lawyers, will the politicians respect it? I mean, the UK is a bit unusual in that uh, you had po politicians who were willing to fight a battle uh, for over six years, seven, eight years, and finally, 50 years back, you won. Uh, and that's the ideal way to do it. But in most countries, politicians are just too scared to make the change. So we have to depend on the courts. And by and large, they do respect the opinions of the courts. It's change that they want to make. They just don't want to do it themselves. They're cowards. So Mr. Modi won't be opposed to it? Um, he probably doesn't care. I mean, uh, they don't really care. They, they might care if it goes on to something like gay marriage. But at this moment, we're just asking for basic decriminalization. And they've indicated that that's OK with them. They just don't want, the, they just, they just don't want to do it themselves. But are you suggesting then that your fight isn't over, that you will move on to gay marriage oh, and, sure. and, and full gay me. rights? Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is just the beginning. I mean, and you know, India is full of young, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people who are going to take this this fight to uh, all possible levels. It's just the uh, Vikram, what do you think this moment represents? 
I mean, it represents years personally for us who've been fighting the battle, the end of 18 years of battle. And that's the idea exactly how to do it, taken us in years. But, you know, John, I think what it really represents is the success of India. Because in some years back, we actually lost on the Supreme Court. Uh, and it was a bad loss. It was a bad loss with a bad decision. And at that time, every um, felt that, you know, people would go back in the closet, that people would be scared, that the law okay, if they were going to change, exactly the opposite happened. One for base scene is realizing a lot of gay and lesbian people coming out, a lot of young gay and lesbian people refusing to go back in the closet to start with. And that has changed everything. Vikram Doctor, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.